Yeah. Did you take the plugs out and see if they were wet or dry? No, yeah. You might want to do that. We may even want to change them. Right. I'm guessing we're rolling. Okay. What we're going to talk about is timing, but not ignition timing. Quite often, you'll be looking for something to do to make your motor nicer. So you'll just, you've decided to degree in your cam. So you got a degree wheel on the motor, you got it on top dead center, you moved your degree wheel, and you've got zero with the pointer on it. The spec says the intake opens at so many degrees before, and you run through the cam specs, and it's advanced too far, or it's retarded too far. All right. What I've got here are some regular Woodruff keys. Here's one that's a little bit thick. Now these three, I don't know if the camera's going to be able to show it, but they've been ground. There's a little ledge on them here, here, and there. If I draw an end-on view of this Woodruff key, it'll show you nothing. It'll look like this. Now if we... That didn't help. So, what we're going to do is rely on me being able to draw this. Oh boy. That's not going to show it too good either. Let's go with the end on view. Here we go. Now we're getting somewhere. That's the end on view right here. So we're going to just a little bit modify this. Make a third angle projection. Got it. What you do is you take a regular Woodruff key that is wider than the slot is for your pinion gear. You grind a step in it so that the thickness from here to here, this thickness right here, is the finish size of the Woodruff key that would fit in the pinion shaft that holds your pinion gear. You go to the other side and grind it and you end up with the thickness down here the same as the stock key would be for your pinion shaft your pinion gear. So when you're done you put the key in and you put the gear on and it moves the gear. Well that's what you want it to do because now when you put the cam in it, you haven't moved the engine position but you've moved the cam position. So you can make these in a couple thousandths increments different. Two, four, six, eight thousandths offset. You put the key in position A, it advances the cam. You take that key out and rotate it and put it back in, it retards the cam. And so you can dial the cam in and it'll be what it'll be close to what the manufacturer wants it to be have your cam degreed in and for your cam timing. So there's a little trick to dial in the cam timing. But now that's for a big twin. 
for a sportster, they're a pain in the neck. You've got four cams. Now we're on the pushrod side of the motor, and they're numbered one, two, three, four. And two is tied into the pinion. What you do here is press the gears off of the four cams. Hone out the center of the gear until you've got a loose slide fit onto the cam, similar to a wrist pin going in a piston or in a rod. A nice slide fit. Put the motor on top dead center, get your cam specs out, rotate, you know, so many degrees before, so many degrees after, whatever they say, it goes with the cam. Do number two first. That's important. You put the cam, excuse me, you put the motor where it goes, you put the cam gear in, and you index it so the two marks are pointing to each other like this. So you got that witnessed in. Now this cam will move. You rotate the cam. until it's so many cam lifts so far, 30, 36,000, so many degrees, whatever. Whatever that cam manufacturer tells you that when it's in place that the cam should be in this position, you just rotate the cam where you want it, grab a TIG welder, put a couple spots on the cam and gear, And now you've locked that gear to that cam where it belongs. Then do number one, three, and four. Um, takes a while. It's a pain in the ass. Really makes a difference. This is how you do cam timing.